So, Mark, Happy New Year. Yes, Happy New Year. Um, first week of January, but we're only about three months away from the start of the new season. Must be uh, really fully focused now on that uh, on that new campaign. Oh, look, it's exciting. I think it's t probably too far to be fully focused. You're still trying to put the building blocks in place, but you're starting to ramp it up for definite. Um, but it's nice. You've got Christmas out of the way and that start of that new year. And you've all got different chances to put different slants on things. You're either put into bed an abysmal, disappointing year if it hasn't quite gone your way as an individual, or if it's gone well, you're trying to build upon it and all the promise and excitement of a new season. So what what it does do, it allows everybody to have a clean slate and to look forward with, as I say, with excitement. We all want the same things. We want to win trophies and we want to entertain. We've seen the guys doing a lot of um, strength work, fitness work, pre-Christmas. That focus switches more to the cricketing side, does it now, in the start of the new year? Well, it never goes away from the physical side, but he, but you're trying to now put in cricket in there as well, where the players largely, the ones who are England all the time for the whole winter weren't going abroad, they were Jacks, the FLS and C's players really, it was his time to get those foundations, those building blocks, that's hard to set you up for what we know is a long summer, but the modern cricketer now, we've got lots of players going around the abroad all the time, coming in and out, so dealing with them and, and adjusting programs is, is quite hard but yeah from now onwards we start to really get the going into cricket and there's still be quite a bit of individual cricket work but um we'll start to work more as groups as well and march time we'll be heading out to uh, abu dhabi um give us your thoughts mark on what you hope to uh, um, uh hope to achieve out there oh look, the first thing you come together as a group as i said we've got players scattered all around the world so we expect it all back by march the first and all should be back there uh, and then we go that time when you go away is, is for me it's really valuable because you've got no distractions you know you're leaving wives and girlfriends and partners behind and it's just a team um so you've got a chance to to chat to talk to start to form those bonds that are, you're going to need and, and th that make sure your culture is in the right place and is set set ready for you know all the bumps and scrapes and the highs and lows that that happens in the summer and there's been quite a few comings and goings uh, tail end of uh, tail end of last year mark obviously george garton coming in fans members really excited to see him in in action henry brooks uh, uh, has, uh, has left the club give us your overall assessment of where we are with the squad well look, i'm a head coach i always want more <laughs> um but obviously the, the the players that departed at the end of the season was George Garrett and and Manraj and, and and Ethan and we said um, fond fond but farewells to them you know they're really lovely people good guys and we wish them all the best and two of them have got other clubs which is exciting for them um, we we're always looking if we could to to get in a, um, a a domestic bowler for our T20 team. Um, and obviously George is, we managed to get hold of George Garton, which is, is a great bonus, we think, to us. Um, he, he'll, he'll give us something different because he's got this yard of pace and, and he's a brilliant fielder and he's got potential on the bat. So I think, you know, he should be an exciting signing over the next few years for us and hopefully help us get us that bit closer to, to winning trophies. Um, it was never in the plan to lose Henry. Um, in some ways that is disappointing, but um, you've also got to understand where players are and Henry wants to play. Um, he's, you know, he he feels the age he is. He, he can't be this bloke who's in and out a bit. And and from performance point of view, we haven't been able to um, reward Henry with enough consistent selection because of the, the, the the bowlers we've had and, and because of how Henry's gone. So again, I always think you got to listen to the player. You got to make sure you're not shortchanging the club and and making them vulnerable. But you know, we we met as a management group and felt it would be a good thing for Henry to go and it frees up a little bit of budget for us to to reinvest in, in that side. So we've got a little bit of money to, to spend and we're going to have to spend that wisely because, and it's going to have to be on a bowler because we are short now with Henry going on, on cover. Um, and that's also because of where we're not quite sure where Liam Norwell is. I mean, he's, he's, he's injury, he's pain free at the moment, um, but we're obviously not quite sure how that injury will work out. Um, Sam, we've got all summer, we think, we hope, but there's a Pakistani World Cup and if he's in that, then we'll, we'll lose him and obviously we won't see, we're, we're never sure what's going to happen to him. So our, our cover's not big, um, so I think we're going to have to try and bring another a bowler in, having lost Henry now, and use that money that way. And you talked about um, overseas options, potentially bringing 
somebody else in. But of course, you've got the complication next year um, of the World Cup. So how, how challenging is it to navigate through that and, and find somebody that you think could really bring the team on, but of course, crucially, will be available? Oh, look, it's, it's really hard. Um, it's, it's harder all the time because of the competing factors from an IPL to an international programme. And then, as I say, you've got the the T20 World Cup, which will take a lot of bowlers out. Um, and players don't want to come for the same chunk. So, we're well, fingers crossed we've got Haas. But I think um, we'll be looking at the potential of an overseas bowler to try and supplement um, our resources, really, because you, you can, I always think you can never have enough bowlers. And um, in my three years here, when we've we won a championship, when we overall kept majority of the squad of bowlers fit, we got into a right pick away and everybody was injured. And last year we were doing really well. And when we lost a couple of key bowlers, we got into a bit of a mess again and then finished strong. So we know the importance of the bowlers and that is something over the next few years we've got to develop because we haven't got enough resources, which is a, another problem for whatever the reason is. Over the years, we've not been able to bring it through our own bowlers, be it. And that is something that Stuart Barnes is a bowling coach. He'll be working hard with Paul Grief and on the academy to see what's, is there anything that we can do differently to try and produce our own bowlers? Is it a talent identification um, problem? Is it coaching at the, at the lower levels? And, or is it just that the talent's not there? But that is something we need to, to address to try and make our um, reserves richer. And you touched, Mark, there on the... Um... Uh, the fitness side with um, with Liam, I mean, everybody in the club and, and across cricket are hopeful that he can make a comeback next year. And give us a give us an update with where we are with the rest of the squad. I know that Ed Barnard's had a um, a minor operation, I believe. And Bethel, where are we with um, uh, with Jake? Well, Barney's Barnard's Barney's a bit more than a minor operation. It's quite a serious operation. It's frustrating that ideally we'd have had that done earlier, um, but we are where we are, and I will hopefully he'll be fully fit the start of the season where there is a danger you might not be a bowler at the beginning which again you, you chuck into your bowling resources um but he's at the moment he's doing really well um he'll do some light batting in january and he'll in this month and then in next month he'll start hopefully to build it up and then we'll, we'll hopefully get him bowling as well and he'll be touch and go but hopefully ready for the first game of the season but we'll have to watch that that one pan out um best done really well so he's pain, again pain free at the moment. He'll get another scan in this week to just get the, the full green light so he can continue a full cricket programme as he starts to build into the summer. And, you know, it was disappointing for Beth. You look, he's only 19. I think we forget that. He's still a baby. I might turn 20, I'm not sure. But he's still a baby and he, his thoughts are highly baby around the country. But we're just going to make sure we're patient with him. And him missing so much cricket because of his back last year is a disappointment. But... We know he can compete on both fronts because not only just as a, a great prospect with a bat, he's an exciting prospect with a ball as well in both formats. So to get him back would be great. Um, young Boovy, um, he's had a bit of trouble with his groin, so he had a little bit of a op uh, uh, in the winter. That's progressing nicely. We're expecting him to be fully participating in this next next three months. And I know that you and the um, the squad have worked hard on the... <laughs> the off-field side, obviously with Kate Green on the sports psychology, but also the what it means to be a bear, to wear the bear and ragged staff and everything that, that comes with that, the proud tradition. Yeah, look, I mean, when I, I've been here, I've done three seasons now, and it, I, it was very, very clear to me when we came, we were a massive transition phase. Um, a lot of the big players had been leaving over the last three or four years, and as, as dynasties naturally come to the end in any any spot and, and the year previous to me starting Timmy Ambrose and Ian Bell finished and it so it was quite a new dressing room and a vulnerable dressing room in in a, in a sense of ownership and where they stand in the game so we've done year and year we've built on trying to give ownership to this group trying to to let them evolve and part of that is the culture side and working and what this bear means as well. But it's got to what it means to them. It's not what it meant to a Dennis Amis or, a, I don't know, a Jonathan Trott plays. This is their time, and it's got to mean what it means to them. So what we have to do is respect the traditions and the standing of, of, of the game and where so we listen to your, your Trotters and your Bells and your, your, your Dennis Amises, but equally we've got to make it relevant. So we've done a lot of work on that. We've done a lot of work on our culture full stop, what allows us to withstand these bumps and how we look after each other. 
and also from Kate's point of view as our sports psychologist understanding ourselves understanding how we deal with pressure what, what it does to us how we absorb that to try and as I say to put these layers underneath us in, as individuals so then we're out there in the arena we've all we've got a lot of armor that we can put on that can withstand all these arrows and rocks that come and hit you as a professional sportsman and and finally what does what does 2024 look like for Mark Robinson I mean you've been in the game a, a long time Mark um, are you still do you always develop you're looking at sort of new ways of coaching do you evolve yourself as well as the players yeah, you do. Look, you, you've probably got your core way of how you work and what you stand for, my own values of what I believe in. But you're always evolving, and I think you have to evolve to the, with the group you've got. That's one thing. So as I say, I came my first year, I, I couldn't coach as I would have done an England Lions team, a Sussex team that was winning heavily trophies because you're in a different place. So you've got to evolve and adapt, and you've got to grow with that group as well and recognising where that where the team is. I'd say we're... We're not where we want to be as a as a group and as a, as a squad. We've we say we're vulnerable in certain areas, but we're we're definitely on a great path. And the KPIs that you set in in place to measure your 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 trajectory, you know, we're hitting, which is good. So, from my point of view, as just as a selfish individual, as I say, you you learn from the people around you as different people come in. I did spend a bit of time with Stuart, our chief exec, on some away days. That that broadens your horizon. You know, we went to, as a little management group to Newcastle United with Dan Ashworth, and we looked around the training ground, and we met their key members of staff. That evolves you. You know, Moyn Ali comes in, Glenn Maxwell comes in with the IPL and England experience, and you're around them in the train. That that expands me as, as much as it expands the players because you're listening to to different people and having to manage different people to having to manage this group now.